Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Sunday. So thanks for coming. Um, did you guys wear your church socks this morning? <gasps> you did? Let me see. Let me see those church socks. <gasps> Ooh, unicorns and basketballs. Oh, those are so cool. I wore mine. I have my, uh, my pizza socks on here like this. I also have my, oh, my taco socks. I got stripey ones with tacos, but anyway, it's good to see you. Um, I wore my Taekwondo jersey. hi -ya! We are in a series called hi -ya, and this is how we, uh, just like a ninja is training to take off old habits, um, what we're doing is we're training to be like Jesus. And so we're going to take off our old self and put on our new self. And last week we talked about taking off lying and putting on truth, and so we learned how God wants us to make sure that we tell the truth, even though sometimes it may get us in trouble, but it pleases God that we tell the truth. But this week, we are talking about love, and God wants us to take off hate and put on love. And we're going to, we're going to do a story called The Good Samaritan. Now, the Samaritans and the Jews, they did not get, they get along very well. So the Jewish people hated the Samaritans, the Samaritan people hated the Jews, and so you would never find a Samaritan helping a Jewish man. But in this story, Jesus points out that a Jewish man is beaten up on the way from Jerusalem to Jericho. And so a Samaritan man stopped, he was the only one that stopped. Out of the three people that walked by, he was the third person, excuse me, and he was the only one that stopped by. And he helped bandage the man's wounds and took him to the inn and paid for the innkeeper to help um, to keep him safe and help heal him and so it's an incredible story of how the Samaritan man took off hate and put on love and we're gonna do that we're gonna go through that so I hope you guys will join us um, there's also a video from Nun and Chuck um, just to talk about love and hate but but have a look at the video and the Bible story and I'll see you guys in a second Chuck, what happened are you okay oh this oh yeah it's no big deal just a little scratch just a little scratch. And Chuck, you're practically in a full body bandage. Tell me who did this to you. Tell me. Tell me. Oh, uh, maybe I should wait to tell you until you've calmed down a bit. Oh, no. No, sir. You tell me who did this to you right this instant. Well, you see, Dragonfire and what? I. What? Dragonfire? Dragonfire? I knew it. He is the worst. Where is he right now? Uh, you tell me right now. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. What can I do to get him back for this? Uh, well, well, I know, I know. I'll take his uniform and I'll rip it to shreds. And then when I'm done with that, I'll replace his hair gel with pink paint. Soon he'll be walking around the dojo with a torn up uniform and bright pink hair. He'll be laughed out of this place never to be seen or heard from again. Um, hold on there, old crazy eyes. You didn't let me finish. I don't want to hear any more. I can't stand to look at what he's done to you, much less have you tell me all the ugly details. It'll only make things worse. But it wasn't like that at all. Just listen for a second. Dragonfire and I were getting ready for a sparring match, and I was putting on my uniform. Next thing I know, I'm tripping over my own belt. It all happened so fast. But Dragonfire told me I did a front flip and landed on some weights. <laughs> I was just lying there on the floor, stunned, and I couldn't move a muscle. That's when my dude, Dragonfire, came to my rescue. He helped me right up, got me my first aid kit, and here I am. Wow, I'm so glad Dragonfire was there to help you in a time of need. Oh no, here I am hating on him and for something he didn't even do. I feel awful, Chuck. I can't believe how easy it was for me to just believe the worst about Dragonfire and go straight to hating him. You know, even if Dragonfire had done something to hurt me, Hating him was never going to make it better. That's why it's so important to take off hate and to put on love. You're so right, Chuck. And boy, am I glad that he fixed you up. You'll be good as new in Whoa. no time. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. Oh, 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 I'm okay. Oh. Konnichiwa. It may seem strange, but in order to become a true ninja warrior, one must master the art of love. Loving people who are not like us is not an easy assignment, but with God's help, we can learn to take off hate and put on love, just like Jesus did. In the book of Luke, a man who was an expert in the law stood up to Jesus and asked, how can I have eternal life? Jesus asked the man what he thought the answer was. He said to love God with all your heart and also love your neighbor the same as you love yourself. Jesus told him he was right 
and went on to explain who his neighbor was by telling this story. There was once a man traveling to Jerusalem, and while he was on his way, some robbers attacked him, took all that he had, and beat him. He was lying near the road in need of help when two men walked by on the other side of the road. The first man was a priest, and the second was a Levite. Although you would think both of these men would have stopped to help the traveler, neither one of them did. But when a Samaritan passed by, he saw the hurt man lying on the road. He felt sorry for him and decided to show love by helping him bandage his wounds. The Samaritan put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and paid the innkeeper two silver coins to watch over the man. Jesus finished the story and asked which one of the three men was really a neighbor to the hurting man in the story. The expert in the law replied that the Samaritan was the neighbor. He was the one who had shown love. We can all show love by remembering 1 Corinthians 13. It tells us that love is patient and kind. Love does not want what belongs to others, and it does not become easily angry. To become a ninja warrior, you must learn to take off hate and put on love. So, how'd you like the story? The Good Samaritan? Yeah, see, so um, the Samaritans, in the Bible it says that he was a despised Samaritan. And so that means that the Jewish people hated Samaritans, but the man was hurting. And it was really cool to see that the Samaritan man came and took it upon himself to, to help make him feel better and to pay for him to stay at the inn so he feels better. And so Jesus then asked everyone, so who is our neighbor? And our neighbor is everyone. And so through the story, Jesus says, it doesn't matter if there are people that are different than us. Those people that are different, God asks us no matter what to love. Because it's not just our neighbor, like the person living beside you. Do you have a neighbor? Yeah, the guy, the person beside you, you know, maybe has kids, maybe doesn't, maybe he's older, maybe younger. Um, but the person living beside you, yes, it's your neighbor, but when we're talking about who our neighbor is, we love our neighbor, which is everyone. And so Jesus asked us to do that. How are you guys doing on your memory verse? Pretty good? So our memory verse this week is Ephesians 4, verses 23 and 24. I'm going to put it up on screen. Ta-da! I'm going to try and do it by memory. And it goes something like this. It says, you must be made new in your heart and in your thinking. Be that new person who is made to be like God, truly good and pleasing to Him. Ephesians 4, verses 23 and 24. I think I got it. How are you guys doing your memory verse? If you guys have been practicing, I'd love to be able to see that. Send me a video. I want to stop by over the summer and give you guys some sour keys. I'd love to see that. Um, how's your coloring contest going? So, let's see. I got a bunch of stuff on my desk. <laughs> coloring contest. So, this is from my son, Ty. Um, if you haven't checked it out on the Facebook group, if you just kind of scroll down on the group, you'll see a PDF file I put in there for a coloring contest. We want you guys to color this. Make sure you put your name, see, Tyson G, and your age, put it on there, and drop it off. So either if you see me on Sunday, you can drop it off, or if you're around St. Thomas, you can drop it off at the office. I want to fill my whole entire office wall, not this one, this is my home office, but my work office at church, whole wall full of all these artworks, and then everyone who is Everyone who has done a, uh, a little piece of art here and uh, joined in the contest, I'm going to make a draw in three different age categories. So it doesn't matter what age you are, as long as you're between zero and grade five, uh, pretty much any kid can drop off and I'll make sure we go in for a draw because I would love to be able to drop off some prizes, have some winners, and then we'll uh, display all of your art on my wall and I'll take a picture of it after I've gotten it all up. But you have till August 1st, I'm going to say, because... You know, the 31st, I think, is a Saturday, and it's not fair. So we'll say right to August 1st, you can drop them all off at the church. I'll make sure I put their names in. But I've already had some parents send me pictures of their kids already going to it. So I love that you guys are already coloring. If you've lost the link or you don't know where it is or you're wondering what I'm talking about, send me a message on Facebook. You can email me. You can call me. You can text me. Um, pretty much any way get a hold of me, and I can send that to you so your kids can participate. Um, just a couple things before we get dismissed. Uh, camps, if you haven't registered yet, um, forestcliff.ca for camp registration. Also, if you are a parent and you're looking to donate um, to send kids to camp, 
we are accepting donations. Um, you can write a check to Faith Church and just put FST Summer Camp Ministry, or you can send an e-transfer to giving at faithstthomas.com. But we would love to be able to send as many kids as possible to camp. We are looking to have three weeks of camp, which is just over, which is just about 300 students um, for camp. But we want them to be filled with the message of Jesus and to know that there's a church community around them that loves them. So if you do want to sponsor a child for camp or you want to give money, to, money towards allowing uh, kids to come to camp, we have subsidized the camp fees so it's a little less expensive than it would normally be. So if you want that, um, for more information, let me know. Send me an email or text. If you just want to know what's going on, let me know. And also the last thing is I'm looking for volunteers for September. Our kids program hopefully will start back up in September. We've had some challenges and roadblocks with the guidelines. Um, but it looks like everything's opening up and I'd like to get started. So if you're interested in helping in any way, if you want to, any way, whether it's nursery, nursery or check-in or whether it's just helping just to make sure you kind of some audience, audience participation, um, some Bible story stuff, uh, just some kid wrangling, uh, anything really. Just if you have interest and you want to be able to feed into your children and other, and other children um, with the discipleship and the message of Jesus, just let me know because I'd love to have you serve on my team. Um, please send me an email. Um, you can send me a message, uh, you can text me, you can call me, send an email to the office, pretty much any way uh, you can volunteer for Pedro. Um, but at the end, we're going to pray. So everyone put your hands to the side. We're going to spell the word pray, P-R-A-Y. Bow our heads and close our eyes. God, thanks for this day. Thank you that you've asked us to take off hate and put on love. And sometimes it's super difficult because there are lots of people that are different than us. But that's okay because you asked us to love everyone because everyone is our neighbor. And God, you've loved us so much that you sent your son and that just allows us to be able to love others even more. God, I pray you bless every mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and aunt and uncle and cousin and brother and sister and everyone here representing here. Help us have an awesome day. Help us to show the love uh, that you've given us to others. Thank you for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I'll see you guys later and hopefully maybe I'll see you outside maybe for outdoor church. It'd be great. Anyway, I'll see you later.